lesson, we're going to do some rendering. And I'm going to give you a render man kickstarter where we're going to start with some materials, throw in a few lights and get a final render done. As you can see here, I've got this little basic scene that I've set up. It's got a couple of swords, it's got this plaque here and we have a cool little walk cycle of our Pixar render man teapot. And we're going to get started by just putting a couple of lights into the shop. There's a number of ways we can do this and the first is we can either right click over the light icon here and then we get a bunch of options for rectangular lights or disc light, distance and sphere and cylinder lights and we have this AOV light as well but we'll kind of get to these later so the other main way is that you can simply just left click on the light icon and by default it will automatically drop down for you a rectangular light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this up and scale it so that it becomes a sort of top light and I'm going to put it up here and make it a little bit bigger. Now I guess the first thing to say here is that you see the green R here well that denotes that it's actually a render man light it doesn't actually uh, specify which way the light is being illuminated from it just shows you that it's a render man light so it can be rotated any which way you want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this and make a rim light. Move this down a bit. And then just scale this one up. Just hide the grid one sec. And then move this one down a bit. Now we've got this scene with a couple of lights in it. It's time to get the interactive rendering going within the viewport. And the simple way to do this is that you basically just press this blue R icon here. And by pressing that, RenderMan fires up within the viewport. I just want to do one little tweak to it. So if I come to the render settings, inside the RenderMan tab here, you have this max samples. And I just want to increase this a little bit because I like my IPR sessions to refine the max samples a little bit more than 64 just gets rid of the noise and it sort of shows me a little bit more how the final render will look. And you can see it down here, it says, this is the integrator that you're using, and this is the max samples, and this is the pixel variant. So I'm just going to increase this to 256, and it will just refine a bit smoother and just get rid of some of that noise. Closing that down. Now what I want to do is I want to apply a couple of shaders. And the first one I'm going to make is I'm going to put it on the body of this teapot. and I come up to the Pixar star ball here. If I click on it, it will now drop in a Pixar surface. As you can see here, there's a plethora of options. And I would say out of all the renderers out there, it probably has the most options in one material. It has three different speculars, a primary, a rough and a clear coat, it has iridescence, it's got fuzz, it's got a couple of subsurface models that you can play around with, the glass and glows and we will get to these in a later lesson. What I want to do is I just want to add a texture into the diffuse color. And I do this in a normal Maya way by clicking on the checker box. And there are two ways you can do it. One is you can use the standard Maya file node. But the recommended way is to use the Pixar texture node. So if you come to the render man menu here and under patterns, you've got textures. And here you've got this Pixar texture node. And I would recommend that you use this. And it has a bunch of options that are render man specific. So if I select it, the first thing you can see is that it goes pink. And the reason for this is render man is alerting you that it can't find the texture. And the reason is there's no, you know, we haven't plugged the texture in. But if, for instance, you open up an old scene and you'd move some textures and render man or Maya couldn't find those textures, it alerts you with this pink color. So you see the pink color you know that for that object there is a texture that has been moved or is missing and in this instance it's because we haven't yet specified which texture we want to use so if I click on the blue folder I can then choose my texture and the way that render man handles its textures is it prefers to have these .tex file formats which it will automatically convert your textures for you so if you insert a jpeg or a tiff or a png file in the background 
RenderMan will then convert it to this .tex file format, which it prefers to use for all its textures. In this example here, I've got this PNG that I want to use. If I open it, you can see what RenderMan does is it applies this default texture whilst in the background it's converting your image file to the .tex file. And it doesn't take very long, and it only does it the very first time that it needs it. So if you've already converted the textures, it doesn't go through this process anymore. And as you can see, it's now, it's now converted our texture, and it's correctly piped it through. Now, the first thing I can see is that it's in the wrong color space. And there's a slight gotcha when you first arrive at RenderMan, is that if you're using any 8-bit maps, so you're using textures from Substance Painter or Designer or Polygon or Megascans, you always need to check this linearize box here. And effectively, what that does is it applies an sRGB transform to your image and it'll actually make them look correct. So always make sure this is turned on. Okay, so we have this texture plugged in and I'm just gonna add a little bit of specular to it. So jumping back into the Pixar Surface node, I'm just gonna name this. I'm just gonna add some specular to it now. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the rough and the, and the clear coat. So I'm just gonna introduce you to how RenderMan deals with its specular. And it has two modes that it works in. One is this artistic mode, which is based on a face and edge color and a Fresnel exponent, which blends between the two colors. Or it works in this physical mode, which is based on index of refraction. So you can, you can de decide which way you, you prefer to work. In this example here, I'm just going to use the artistic. So if I increase the edge color from black to white, you can now see that on the glancing angle of our teapot, we now start to get some specular. And if I then increase the face color up, we then now start to introduce some specular on the face of our model. I'm just going to turn the roughness down a little bit because I kind of want it to be a bit shiny. For the minute, this is good enough and we can, we can come back and refine this. Okay, so now we have this body of the teapot looking okay for the moment. I'm just going to make a black plastic for the lid and the feet. And the way to do this, I've just selected them here. And again, apply another Pixar surface to them. Let's call them black plastic. Just turn the defuse down a bit. And then I'm just going to increase the edge color and then just increase the face color as well. So now I've kind of started to get this kind of black plastic material going. So now we have these two shaders, I think it's time to introduce you to the amazing preset browser that comes with RenderMan. The way to open this is to click on this blue ball here. And when you do that, you can see that RenderMan ships with a whole bunch of presets that you can instantly use from fabrics to liquids to metals to paints. There's a whole wider range of materials that comes preset with RenderMan that you can use in your scenes. But the amazing thing about it is that it allows you to create your own shaders, save them to your own libraries, and then reuse them with different scenes. And not only that is that you can use them across DCCs. So, for instance, if you've got this amazing black plastic here that uh, you're particularly proud of within Maya, you can then save it to your preset browser in its own material library. You can then jump into Houdini and the same black plastic shader will also be in Houdini. It's a really flexible pipeline for materials between Maya and Houdini. But in this instance, I'm just gonna show you a couple of presets that I've already created in Substance Painter. So if I come here and I just load in this library that I've already created, you'll see that here I have a number of materials that I have exported directly out of Substance Painter. I'm just going to come through and I'm going to apply some to the various objects here. So here I've got the hook. So I'm going to select that and right click and I select import and assign to selected. And then I'm going to go here shield left blade, which is that one. And then this is left handle. This is the right blade, right handle, and then finally we have our shield itself. Okay. Now you can start to see that 
you know, my viewport is becoming slightly cluttered. My interactive experience is sort of hindered by the wireframe selections that I'm getting on objects. So the simple way around this is to come up to the show option here and you come all the way down to selection highlighting. And this is just a personal choice, but it allows me to select objects and work on the shaders or move them or do whatever I want with them, but I don't see the green highlighting selection. Okay, so I think it's starting to get somewhere. It's a bit dark and we can come back and refine this in a minute, but the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a Pixar dome light to our scene. And this enables us to connect a HDRI map. And the way to do this is to come up here to this Pixar dome light icon. And when I connect it, you can see that it instantly bathes the whole scene in white. And this color here is derived from this parameter here. And you know, you can change it to get whatever color you desire. But in this instance, what I want to do is I actually want to plug in a HDRI map. And the way to do this is again, come to the blue folder and then select the which map you want. Now I've already gone ahead and pre-converted some HDRI maps. Uh, and the one I want to use is number 16 here. So you can now see that it's applied it to the dome light and it's starting to illuminate our scene. However, we can see it in the background of the viewport and there are two steps to getting rid of this. The first here is to disable this primary visibility. So once I do that, I don't see it in the viewport, but because I'm seeing the dome light itself inside the viewport, I also need to hide that. So if I come here to the dome light and I scroll down to display, I need to turn this LOD visibility off. And what this will do is this will hide it in the viewport, but it'll also still use the illumination coming from the light. Okay, so I'm just gonna come back and I'm just gonna refine this light a little bit. Just to, okay, I'm just gonna go around a bit more. It's going to scale this light up to really get that rim light effect. You can see it's starting to come here. And I'm just going to add a slight bit of color to this, to this rim light. And I'm gonna do that by enabling the temperature. So I enable the temperature and I'm just gonna make it a bit warmer. And then I'm just going to adjust this top light a bit as well. I'm just gonna make that a little bit colder. Okay, so this is starting to look really nice now. We've applied a few textures. We've dropped in a couple of lights. I'm just going to select these just for the minute. I'm just going to hide them so we can we can see our render in its full glory. So now we've got a clean viewport and we can tumble around it. And you know, uh, I think it looks. I think it's starting to look pretty good. Um, the last thing I just want to do here is that you can see on the teapot spout it's looking a bit low resolution. And so the way to fix this is to enable the subdivision within RenderMan. If I select it and I come to the shape node and then I drop down the RenderMan, just close some of these up. In the subdivision drop down here, you can see that we've got Catmull Clark. So once I select it, now what it'll do is it'll come back and it'll add Catmull Clark subdivision to our teapot. And I'm just gonna go through and enable this for our feet and our body and our lid. I think one last little refinement I'm gonna to do to this, I'm just gonna add a side light here just to brighten up this area. So again, coming over here, left clicking, I'm just gonna add another Pixar light. Scale this up. And you can see here, I'm not, I'm not worried about which way the R is pointing. Um, again, I'm going to enable the temperature and make this a bit warmer. And I'm just going to walk it back out of frame a little bit. Okay. So I think our scene here is in a pretty good place. We've applied a few shaders. We've had a look at the preset browser. We fired up an interactive rendering within the Maya viewport and we've applied some subdivisions to a number of objects. So I hope this has been useful and let's move on to the next lesson. Mm -hmm.